ఈ ముత్త వరకు వెంకటేశ్వర రావు కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ టూ థౌసండ్ ఎయిట్ లో స్థాపించిన కళాశాలలో ఎంబీఏ నాక్ ఏ గ్రేడ్ మరియు ఐఎస్ఓ సర్టిఫికేషన్ సాధించిన మొట్టమొదటి కళాశాల శ్రీ ముత్త వరకు వెంకటేశ్వర రావు కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ త్వరలో అటోనమస్ కాబోతుంది పద్నాలుగులో ఐఎస్ఓ గుర్తింపు రెండు వేల పదిహేను లో రాష్ట్ర ప్రభుత్వం చే ఏ గ్రేడ్ రెండు వేల పదహారు లో నాక్ ఏ గ్రేడ్ ఇప్పుడు ఎన్బీఏ సాధించిన సంస్థ శ్రీ ముత్త వరకు వెంకటేశ్వర రావు కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ Good morning students I am Harsha assistant professor from the department of Tripoli I am going to deal the subject for fourth btech first sem students and the subject name is special electrical machines Good morning to all in this session we are going to learn about the properties of magnetism so let us see the properties of magnetism so there is uh, initially we have to know about uh, magnetization so what is meant by magnetization you know about uh, magnetization so it is defined as the magnetic dipole moment induced per unit volume of the material and the magnetization is uh, amperes per meter so if m be the magnetic dipole the moment of specimen of volume v we can say that m is equal to small m by v okay so v is the volume and small m is the dipole moment of the specimen so on an unmagnetized matter m will be zero when a matter is magnetized each atomic atomic magnetic dipole will point in the same direction and m will be constant throughout so it is defined as the magnetic dipole moment induced per unit volume of the material so magnetization is amperes per meter and the specimen volume will be m is equal to we can say that m is equal to small m by v so m is the magnetic dipole and v is the volume so let's go for the next slide so next one is uh, magnetic induction b it is indicated with p you know all about uh, magnetic induction in our uh, electrical machines most of the uh, dc machines and ac machines uh, most of all the dc machines and ac machines will work on the principle of electromagnetic induction so you know all about electromagnetic induction the machines works under the principle of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so let us see what is meant by the magnetic induction so it is a process by which a substance becomes magnetized by a magnetic field and that is in the sense so the induced magnetism is produced by the force of the field radiating the poles of the magnet so it is a process of the uh, by which a substance becomes the magnetized by a magnetic field so in uh, dc machines or ac machines according to the faraday's laws so of electromagnetic induction so whenever a conductor cuts the magnetic field an emf is induced in it the induced emf is directly proportional to rate of change of flux so like this uh, we have uh, about uh, faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field it experiences mechanical force so like that uh, the magnetic induction it is a substance becomes uh, magnetized by a magnetic field and the induced magnetism is produced by the force of the field and radiating from the poles of the magnet and it is also called as a magnetic flux density which is uh, denoted with b and it is a vector quantity used to measure of the strength of the magnetic field so the unit of the magnetic uh, induction is webers per meter so the units for the magnetic induction is webers per meter so let us go for the next slide so you know all uh, about uh, magnetic field intensity uh, i have already told you in uh, hysteresis curve and about b and uh, h 
so b is the magnetic flux density and h is the magnetic field intensity so it is uh, used to characterize the strength of an external field and uh, the magnetic field due to the external source electric current so only by excluding the contribution due to the material's internal magnetic field so this uh, field intensity uh, refers the strength of the external field not internal field it refers uh, it uh, tells about the strength of the external field so the external field in the sense so the magnetic field due to external sources so whenever you give the supply uh, to the winding it gives the external field so this uh, external field will produce the electric current okay so excluding the contribution due to the materials in the internal magnetic field and it is also known as a magnetization force or uh, auxiliary magnetic field and its unit is same as that of magnetization that is amperes per meter so what is the unit for the magnetization it is uh, the amperes per meter so for the flux weber's per meter okay so this is about a magnetic field intensity h so let us go for the next slide so what is meant by magnetic susceptibility which is uh, represented with xm and it is uh, defined as the ratio of the magnetization to the magnetic field intensity which represents h so therefore xm is equal to m by h so m is the magnetization and h is the magnetic field intensity so the magnetic susceptibility of a material is defined as the intensity of the magnetization acquired by the material of the unit field strength so it is nothing but the susceptibility of the material so which is nothing but it is the it is defined as the intensity of the magnetization so intensity of the magnetization is nothing but an magnetic susceptibility and it is acquired by the material for the unit field strength so this is about magnetic susceptibility so let us see about magnetic permeability which is represented with mu so the magnetic permeability means of a medium it is defined as the ratio of the magnetic induction to the intensity of the field so magnet what is meant by magnetic uh, permeability which is uh, represented with mu so it is defined as the ratio of the magnetic induction the ratio of the magnetic induction is nothing but an magnetic permeability to the intensity of the magnetic field so where uh, mu is equal to b by h so b is the magnetic flux density and h is the magnetic field intensity so this is about magnetic permeability <laughs> so let us uh, compare uh, dia para and uh, ferromagnetic materials so in the previous session i have already told you in the initial uh, class 1 so classification of different types of magnetic materials so there are uh, dia magnetic materials para magnetic materials and also ferromagnetic materials so let us see here uh, the properties of the magnetic material uh, in dia para and ferro so let us initially we see about uh, dia magnetic uh, substance so this uh, dia magnetic substance are those whose substance which are feebly repelled by the magnet so there will be repulsion uh, uh, for these uh, dia magnetic substances so these dia magnetic substances are those uh, substances which have repelled by the magnet so what are the examples for the dia magnet so antimony bismuth copper gold silver quartz mercury alcohol water hydrogen air argon these are all comes under dia magnetic material so next one is uh, para magnetic material so para magnetic substances are those uh, substances which are feebly attracted by the magnet so example aluminum chromium alkali and alkaline earth metals platinum oxygen etc so these are all comes under para magnetic material and uh, you know about uh, the ferromagnetic substances are those substances which are strongly attracted by the magnet example uh, these uh, substances are strongly attracted by the magnet okay if you see the para these are feebly attracted by the ma magnet and these are feebly repelled by the magnet dia is the feebly feebly repelled by the magnet and para is the uh, feebly attracted by a magnet and ferromagnetic is the strongly attracted by the magnet so what are the examples for the ferromagnetic matter iron nickel cobalt so these are all uh, etc comes under the ferromagnetic material
so if you see uh, whenever uh, it is placed in a magnetic field so the dia so i am talking about dia so whenever these uh, dia is uh, placed in a magnetic field the lines of force tend to avoid the substance so if you see the param uh, paramagnetic these lines of force are preferred to pass through the substance rather than here so he, if you observe the dia it is uh, placed in a magnetic field so when placed in a magnetic field the lines of force tends to avoid the substance so in the para the lines of force prefer to pass through the substance uh, rather than the air so rather than the air it passes through the substance okay so next one is ferro so the lines of force tend to crowd into the specimen so these are the uh, comparison let us see the uh, next point so next uh, when the placed when dia is placed in a non uniform magnetic field it moves from stronger to weaker field so when it is placed in non uniform uh, when the dia magnetic material is uh, placed in the non uniform field so it moves from stronger to weaker uh, field okay and next uh, if you observe the paramagnetic field so when placed in a non uniform magnetic field it moves from weaker to stronger field so when it is uh, placed in the non uniform field so it moves from weaker to stronger field so next one is uh, ferromagnetic so when when it is placed in non uniform magnetic field it moves from weaker to stronger field so these are the comparison between dia uh, and para and para ferromagnetic so if you observe the third point so when a diamagnetic rod is uh, freely suspended in a uniform magnetic field it aligns uh, itself in the direction perpendicular to the field so when the mechan diamagnetic rod is uh, freely suspended it will be uniform magnetic field so when it is freely suspended there will be an uniform magnetic field and it aligns itself in the direction of the perpendicular to the field next if you observe the paramagnetic field uh, it is uh, uh, it is aligns itself in the direction parallel to the field so dia is the perpendicular to the field and para is the parallel to the field so if you observe the ferromagnetic material when a paramagnetic rod is uh, freely suspended in uniform magnetic field it aligns itself in the parallel to the field very quickly so these are the differences okay next if you observe the if dia magnetic uh, liquid taken in a watch glass it is placed in a uniform magnetic field and it collects away from the magnetic poles or closer and collects at the center when the magnetic poles are farther okay so next one is paramagnetic so its uh, glass is uniform magnetic field and it collects and center when uh, the uh, when the magnetic poles are closer and collects away from the center when the magnetic poles are farther so if the ferromagnetic liquid taken in a watch glass and it is placed in a uniform <laughs> so it collects at the center when the magnetic poles are closer and collect away from the uh, center when the magnetic poles are further okay so these are the difference so if you observe this uh, diamagnetic is placed in a magnetic field it is weakly magnetized in the direction opposite to the induced field so it is weakly magnetized into the direction opposite to the induced field next one is paramagnetic so whenever uh, this paramagnetic is placed in a magnetic field and it is weakly magnetized in the direction of the including field so if you observe the ferromagnetic it is placed in a magnetic field it is strongly magnetized in the direction of the inducing field so the induced dipole uh, moment is very small and the induced uh, dipole is a positive value here uh, the value is negative for the diamagnetic and paramagnetic the value is positive and for the ferromagnetic it has large positive value so if you observe the intensity the intensity is very small in dia and the value will be negative and uh, for the paramagnetic the intensity of the magnetic is uh, positive and it has very small value and if you observe the ferromagnetic material it has very large positive value okay if you observe the magnetic permeability the mu is always less than the the magnetic permeability mu is always less than the unity so it is about uh, diamagnet if you observe the paramagnet the permeability mu is more than unity so here it is less than unity and for the paramagnetic it is more than unity okay and uh, if you observe this uh, um, ferromagnetic the permeability mu is large much more than unity so these are the differences between diamagnetic material and paramagnetic material and ferromagnetic material okay
and uh, the suspectability is uh, negative and uh, it is it has a, a positive in para and it has very large positive in uh, ferromagnetic material so they do not uh, if you observe the uh, uh, the curic law so they do not obey the curic law the change in properties will not change the temperature and uh, in uh, paramagnetic material the curic law they lose their magnetic properties with rise in temperature so whenever there is rise in temperature uh, the magnetic property will be loosed uh, in the paramagnetic material so if you observe the ferromagnetic material so at certain temperature called curic point they lose the ferromagnetic properties and have uh, behave like an paramagnetic substance so let us see about uh, diamagnetism uh, on the properties of the diamagnetism material so if you observe the diamagnetic material i have already told you it occurs in the substance whose atom consists of even numbers of electrons as electrons such as atoms are pair so the magnetic dipole moment of the atom will be zero uh, these uh, uh, these are the uh, properties of the diamagnetism so so let us see the properties of the diamagnetic material so this is uh, very important here uh, the suspectability and xm of the diamagnetic material has low negative value and it is independent of the temperature in an external magnetic field uh, it is it is it has uh, opposite direction to the field and tendency to move away from the field so if it is uh, suspected freely and they set themselves perpendicular to the field example uh, aluminum nickel cobalt like that okay and we have a uh, paramagnetic material i have already discussed about the paramagnetic material let us see the properties of the paramagnetic material and uh, these substances have uh, relative permeability and xm is positive and suspectability uh, suspectability decreases with rise in temperature so there are different examples for the uh, paramagnetic material aluminum nickel cobalt uh, cuso4 liquid oxygen and solutions like that and uh, in the external field we, if you talk about external magnetic field uh, it is uh, get magnetized in the direction of the field and uh, from the weaker to stronger part of the external field so this is about uh, properties of the paramagnetic material if you see about uh, ferromagnetic material these uh, substances are very strong magnets and uh, the ferromagnets uh, have a spontaneous magnetic movement and due to the spin of electron they have uh, net intrinsic magnetic dipole movement and the interaction between the neighboring and atomic magnetic dipoles in a spins exchange interaction are present even in the absence of external magnetic field so most of the motors uh, most uh, most of the in ac motors or a dc motors so the materials itself of a stator or a rotor are made up of ferromagnetic material if you go for special uh, electrical machines most of the magnetic materials are made up of permanent magnetic material so which are which comes under paramagnetic material so and these material will be heated at high temperature i have already told you in the previous uh, uh, temperature effects so if uh, these materials are uh, heated uh, to a very high temperature the thermal vibrations will become strong enough to set the alignment and domain and the material loses its magnetic property and behaves like so whenever uh, these materials get uh, heated and uh, under uh, different temperatures they will uh, if the material is strong uh, the material itself nickel cobalt aluminum like that if there is uh, sumer cobalt like that samarium cobalt like that if the material has a high magnetism property then uh, these uh, magnets will have high dielectric strength and they will not lose their uh, da- they will not lose their magnetism property even if after the temperature is uh, increased so at heat temperature also it will be operated very quickly so uh, what the main disadvantage of this is uh, these uh, magnets are very costly and if you observe the paramagnetic material uh, the curic temperature will above ferromagnetic material becomes a paramagnetic is called curic temperature so what is meant by curic temperature so the paramagnetic material in the sense the critical temperature so the critical temperature above which a ferromagnetic material becomes a paramagnet so the critical at, at level of uh, the critical temperature i mean to say uh, at the temperature of heat or a cold so at a, the, when there is a critical temperature above magnetic ferromagnetic material it becomes like a param, paramagnetic so it, it is called as an curic temperature okay 
if you see the properties of uh, ferromagnetic material so the value of mu r and uh, uh, xm i have already told you about mu r susceptibility and uh, xm okay so if you see this uh, initially mu r and xm so what is meant by xm so magnetic susceptibility what is meant by mu r magnetic permeability so you can see that and uh, mu r and xm so the mu r is the magnetic permeability xm is the magnetic uh, material okay so mu r and xm the the magnetic the value of mu r and xm of these uh, materials are very large okay and they have a get, get strongly magnetized in the direction of the external field and so they are very strong attracted by the magnets and uh, these are strongly magnetized in the direction of the external field and uh, the external field strongly magnetized the external field means uh, whenever you give an ac supply or dc supply to, to these uh, magnetizing materials so it will be strongly magnetized with uh, the extra direction of the external field and they are uh, strongly attracted by the magnets also and they said uh, themselves parallel to the external field uh, suspended freely so and these they are they will exhibit the hysteresis curve also so we have discussed in the previous class about hysteresis curve and we have discussed uh, in the previous class about uh, temperature effects also so as the temperature increases the value of xm decreases so what is xm what is meant by xm what is uh, what is what is meant by xm anyone so xm is remember xm is the magnetic susceptibility and mu is the magnetic permeability susceptibility permeability okay so xm is the magnetic permeability and mu is the susceptibility okay so whenever uh, the value of xm will decreases and above the certain temperature known as an curic temperature ferromagnets become paramagnet so example aluminum uh, ferro nickel cobalt etc so if you see the super magnetism so the ferromagnetic particles become unstable when the particle uh, size is reduced below a certain size so since the surface energy provides a sufficient energy for the domains at uh, the polarization so the ferromagnets become paramagnets so if in nanometer size the ferromagnet turn into the paramagnet it is differently from the paramagnet and it is referred to the supermagnet so these are about uh, supermagnetic material and uh, the supermagnetism has uh, predict to exit in small ferromagnetic materials below in the critical size of the magnet so what the supermagnetism uh, works on the small uh, uh, ferromagnetic materials and paramagnetic materials so in if you take the example for the supermagnetic uh, property which has uh, uh, in 1954 the nickel particles dispersed as in silica matrix so what are the definition for the supermagnetism includes uh, so the magnetization curve shows the uh, must show no hysteresis so these in supermagnetism uh, the magnetization curve will be no hysteresis and uh, the if you observe the magnetization curve for the stromic sample will be temperature on the dependent of the curves taken on the different temperatures so it will uh, uh, work at different temperatures so if you observe the applications so what are the applications of the material so uh, the in biomedical applications we will it will be used in uh, uh, detection mri magnetic resonance imaging and uh, separation cells dna protein separation dna and treatment drug delivery hypothermia so at biomedical application these are used so other applications like motors we will uh, mostly we will uh, use these uh, Uh, magnetic materials in the motors like special electrical machines uh, we have different types of special electric motors like uh, stepper motor uh, pm dc motor pm ac motor pm uh, synchronous motor and linear induction motor we have a uh, brushless dc motor like that uh, we will use this uh, 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 we will use these magnets on the uh, different machines so there is also sensors for the high sensitivity 
and for the ferro fluid and tunability viscosity and strength aircraft so this is about uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, magnetic materials and the properties of the magnetic materials so what are the mechanical properties of the uh, magnetic materials okay thank you all we will uh, meet in the next slide i hope you all understood if you have any doubts free to call me